In the late 1800s, it seemed like everybody was making a double action pocket revolver. This Harrington Richardson was one of the most popular ones and they made over 850,000 of them. Hi, I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training and this is the American Double Action. These revolvers were manufactured from 1884 to about 1904, and there were three variants. This one has a round barrel, so we know it's a first variant, which is evidently pretty rare. This one has a two and one half inch barrel, and it's chambered in a black powder, 38 Smith & Wesson. However, you'll notice there's a lot of similarities between this and other uh, Harrington Richards of the time, but in particular the H&R uh, Bulldog. So let's tear this one down and get it ready for a thorough cleaning. As always, check and double check the firearm is empty. If you're checking the firearm is empty through the loading gate and you have five cylinders, then check and make sure at least 10 of the cylinders are empty. Always keep your finger off the trigger, keep the firearm pointing in a safe direction, and remove all live ammunition from the work area. This assembly begins by depressing the center pin catch, removing the center pin and the cylinder. On these older guns, I always lubricate all the pins and screws with a few drops of penetrating oil. Then I remove the grips, being careful to lift straight up on the grips because of the alignment pins. The bottom of the main spring slides out to the side, and I'm careful to note the orientation of the spring. Notice the top end is rounded. Before we remove the trigger guard, we need to take note of this very small spring-loaded pin. This is the friction pin, and it's retained by the screw that holds in the trigger guard. To remove the trigger guard, I first remove the front screw. That distinctive click is the trigger spring slipping off the trigger. Now I have to completely remove the trigger guard to get it all back properly together again. I remove the hammer screw, now I remove the trigger guard pin. Being very careful to remove the trigger guard, I catch the trigger spring so I can note its orientation. The same goes for the sear. Under the sear is a very small sear spring. With the trigger guard screw removed, we can reach in and pull out the friction pin spring, then press out the friction pin with a piece of brass wire. Note the friction pin is smooth on one end and has a small nub on the other. The trigger pin holds several parts together. So when I pull the trigger, I'm careful to hold all the pieces together. The hammer removes easily now. The cylinder catch pin latch is held in place by a pin and there's another spring under the latch that I remove carefully to, to note its orientation. The latch spring short leg engages the latch like this.
I have to apply a little pressure to the latch to line up the hole. The trigger group consists of three main parts. The lever and spring sit on the outside and will come off easily. The lifter is held on with a loose fit pin. The lever spring engages this side of the lifter. During reassembly, the lever has to fit through this slot in the breech face. Keeping the pieces aligned and the lever fitted through the slot, I reinstall the trigger pin. In order to fit the hammer, the lifter has to be pushed forward, so I point the revolver down to get a little help from gravity and use the punch to position the lifter. The hammer screw should fit easily. Don't hammer on it, it's not a pin, it's a screw. In order to hold the sear and sear spring in place, I use a temporary slave pin that I custom made for this job. The slave pin holds the parts together during the installation, but will later be pushed out by the actual pin. Next I'll insert the friction pin and spring. Notice the orientation of the friction pin. Smooth end goes in first, followed by the spring. Here I show the orientation of the trigger spring. The short leg fits into the trigger guard and the long leg engages the trigger. This is the trickiest part of getting this gun back together. The trigger spring lays on this ledge of the trigger. As I press the trigger guard in place, it wants to push the spring forward, which can cause the spring to slide off the trigger ledge. If I hear this click, I know I have to start over because the spring is out of place. The method I found that works best is to press the trigger guard against the spring and hold the spring in place. Then insert the trigger guard screw, but only about halfway. Then apply pressure to the trigger guard to line up the hole and insert the pin at the back. This will drive out the slave pin and hold the trigger guard in place. Then, I tighten down the trigger guard screw. The main spring is reinstalled. I found I could do this by engaging the top against the hammer and by just applying a little pressure with my left thumb to line up the bottom of the spring 
it'll slide into the slot in the frame. Finally, install the grips and the cylinder. A quick function check assures me everything's back in place and working properly. Well, that's an interesting one. A revolver that's over 130 years old and still in great shape. I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. And until next time, enjoy your firearms, join the NRA, and be safe out there. Thanks.